time for our big board. We're breaking down more of this morning's top stories. We're going to start with Queen Latifah. Her car stolen from a gas station in Atlanta, making her the latest victim of a crime wave that's been hitting major cities around the country. And Chief David Brown joins us. Chief, good morning. Good morning. How are you? Doing great. Better now that you're here. Uh, so uh, this was not your average car. It's a $160,000 Mercedes. What happened here? We know that the uh, driver of the car got out to fill up, the tank being on the opposite side, on the passenger side of the car, and as that was occurring, uh, some suspect drove up beside the car, got in the driver's seat, and before the person could complete the process, just drove off in the car before they could react. I think of all the times I pull up to the gas station and run in for a bag of Funyuns, you know, while my car is <laughs> filling up. Um, how widespread of an issue, uh, Chief, have crimes like this become? It is on the uptick, auto theft in this country, all across the country, actually. In this particular area, uh, there's been an increase in this as well. And so uh, we need to really be aware when we're filling up at the pumps. So what can people do when they're at the pump to protect themselves? Uh, the first thing is to be aware of your surroundings before you get out of the car. Look around, and if you don't feel comfortable, just drive off to another convenience store or gas pump to fill up. Mm. Uh, if you happen to do get out of your car because you do feel comfortable, uh, continue to keep your head on a swivel and lock your car. Uh, make sure you lock your car anytime you get out of your car, just as a precaution. And then finally, if you see someone come up to you, if you're out of your car uh, and, and gassing up and filling up at the pumps, just walk away. Uh, no, mm -hmm. no value of a car is worth uh, your injury or your life. So just walk away, walk toward the front of the store where there are a lot of people that can witness what's occurring and hopefully uh, scare off any suspects. Good, good safety information. Not a lot of safety information about what you should do vis-a-vis -vis Funyuns, but um, we'll get back to the chief on that Or you could drive later. a minivan and nobody seems to want that, that There you that go. <laughs> That's a good um, safety okay. solution. Okay, this story hits a little too close to home for me. Uh, we all remember this scene from the holiday classic Christmas Vacation when the Griswold's extended family arrives. Take a look. No, wait, folks, 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 Merry Christmas. Hey, you know, they took a pint of fluid out of my lower back. You see this mole? Yeah. This mole in my neck? You uh -huh. think it's changing color? No. Well, you keep it touching it, it's getting redder. Sweetheart, your grandma knows it's got a real painful burr on my heel. And if you rub it for me, I'll give you a whole quarter. Okay? <laughs> a quarter. And I'll give Audrey a quarter, too, Audrey. Okay, so if you have been feeling wiped out for spending a little too much time with your relatives over the holidays, it's not just in your head. There is now a name for this condition. Psychologists have dubbed it family jet lag. We are going to call it FJL. And Dr. Elizabeth Lombardo is here with, with more. So Dr. Lombardo, I bet a whole lot of our viewers right now, it is the week between you know, Christmas and New Year's. People are celebrating Hanukkah as well. A lot of viewers are suffering from this. So what exactly is family jet lag? Yes, family jet lag is a condition that a lot of people are experiencing with the, the physical and the psychological drain of traveling with your family. Now, it can be caused by physical stressors like the travel, not getting enough sleep, changes in your schedule, you know, indulgences in your diet, as well as psychological stressors such as, you know, wanting the holidays to be perfect or dealing with less than pleasant family members. Yeah, expectations that it can be a huge problem here. What, what do you recommend viewers do to avoid feeling exhausted? while spending time with family during the holidays. Yeah, so the first thing to do is take a time out. Get some sleep, take a nap, meditate. If nothing else, just stop and take five deep breaths. That will help calm your body. The second thing is write a thank you note. Now, I'm not talking about the thank you note to Aunt Edna for yet another horrible Christmas gift, but rather an appreciation of someone in your life, whether it's a friend or a family member. Research shows that when we experience gratitude, the stress centers in our brain actually reduce activity. And then get moving, exercise, go for a walk, go to the gym, jump on the bed, turn on music and dance around. Any way that you move your body is gonna re release biochemicals that'll help you feel happier, have less stress and get a good night's sleep. I was uh, talking to Paula earlier about this issue. This really does hit close to home for you. 15 people at your house? Yeah, I only have 12, but I think a couple, yeah, I have people at my house till New Year's. So as you can see, I have my holes and some tissues and some hot water here. So that's basically how family jet lag is is hitting me and my family's still there you guys are always welcome in my house by the way <laughs> <laughs> always <laughs> chief thank you and uh doctor thank you as well we really appreciate your advice uh, you. here on the big board